That's Matt Makoviak. I'll be right back. Well, in our last uh, segment, you heard from Matt Makoviak, a Republican in Texas, talking about the reaction to the Supreme Court uh, and its decision to switch its uh, decision and allow the state to arrest illegal immigrants, at least for a while. So how bad is it down there? It's an invasion, uh, and it's become the number one issue in the campaign. Chad Caton is a national director of operations for Veterans for America First. He joins us now. Chad, thanks for coming on. I apologize if I don't have your name pronounced right. Correct me if I'm wrong. No problem, John. It's Caton. Caton. Well, it's close. Uh, (laughs) Sorry about that. (laughs) No problem. Chad Caton, thanks for coming on. Um, So uh, you were involved in a documentary by uh, Salem Now Productions called Borden Invasion. Uh, What will people see in this documentary? It's a raw look at what's going on at the border instead of the fluff. Um, Stan Fitzgerald, Donna Fitzgerald, our directors, uh, had did a great job of, of putting out the concept of what's really going on at the border. We brought in great professionals like Victor Avila, uh, Tom Holman, uh, Sandy Smith. There's a, a running for Congress in North Carolina who's been really dealing with fentanyl issues in the sort in North Carolina. And we brought those professionals into this particular film to talk about the nuances of what's really going on down there instead of the emotional uh, charge things that, that are going on to show the true ugly of what's happening in our border. And essentially, at the end of the movie, you look at it with the angst and the anger that is these border states uh, to w- this this regime's border policy, which is basically lack thereof. Yeah, and it's showing the actual invasion of uh, of our country. Yeah, as a former TV guy, I, I, the the production on it's very good, and it it um, you you take advantage of access to the border, and there's some um, up close and personal, if that's the way to put it, looks at the 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 razor wire going up and exactly where people are coming over, and you see people uh, at one point uh, because of certain policies. The word that I, I think it was um, Victor Avila. Avila, um, Avila yes. Yeah, the, 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 he said there. You can see they're being repelled in some cases, and so it is possible to repel them. I guess is what I'm saying. Well, we we uh, the the concept of of barriers is is not new. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, seems pretty and, obvious. And, yeah. and and essentially, the very people that are trying to keep these borders open and have the, some of the largest fences around and walls around their particular properties. It's mm-hmm. ironic. Right. Um, the, the concept of border uh, barriers have been around for a very long time. Currently, the Dominican Republic is, is extending their wall all the way across the, uh, the island between them and Haiti based off of uh, barbecue taking over. Yeah. Um, the, the, they're, they're, they're lying to the American people saying that they have operational control of the, of the border is is not even bought by the lowest common denominator in in our country that doesn't even pay attention. Everybody knows the border is a problem. Everybody knows this policy is not working. And the true bloodbath that they have such a problem with when it comes to Donald J. Trump is happening at Biden's border bloodbath. Yeah, what, what is or was Operation Lone Star? Operation Lone Star specifically to what is happening down at the, at the border and and how we can make this a, 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 an actual protect our sovereign country. And mm-hmm. under the, the Texas and what you saw in the Supreme Court today is, is, is being touted and, and excited. People are excited about it, right? But at the same time, it's pretty commonsensical. Mm-hmm. This is, we cannot have a country unless we have an actual, a, actual sovereign border. So the, it, it's kind of, Exciting to see everybody happy that this uh, SCOTUS is the only thing keeping our country from going complete socialism because they keep throwing things back at the Biden regime. And essentially, that's where we're at right now is we have to. And it's sad that we're excited about what the uh, Supreme Court actually did and when it's pretty commonplace and it, we shouldn't need a Supreme Court to, to make that ruling. You see, uh, this is on a kind of an aside, but. When you think about it, because uh, because the, uh, it's a fresh in our minds now that the Supreme Court has uh, ruled today that they the Texas is able to um, uh, control you know uh, arrest people and control try to control the border. 
uh, and prevent illegal immigrants from coming in. Um, you you wonder this if this were the end of the Hillary Clinton uh, Hillary Clinton's second term, what we'd be dealing with right now? Oh my goodness! It's it's scary I, I to think about. Just think if you even apply it to Texas, it. Yeah. you know. Well, I think Texas would be, you know, there's a lot of secession folks in, oh, in yeah. Texas, which I'm completely against. Um, and and I, I, I think it's silly for people that are talking to secession of what that actually looks like. Um, but at the same time, with a Hillary Clinton, the, the worst thing that could probably happen is losing Texas in secession um, from the from the republic because of somebody like a Hillary Clinton. Of course, it's all hyperbole, and, and, and I know that we – having Donald Trump for four years gives us a great basis to see what is upcoming. If we can, uh, if we can outvote the cheat, right. Mm -hmm. And, and stay on top of it. And people are becoming more educated. The the poll watchers are armed with the right uh, laws to protect themselves and stop things at polls. I like where our country is going. I just don't know if it's too late. I, I pray it's not. And that's why we work hard at VFAF veterans for Trump every day. Yeah. Now, uh, what is the difference, uh, Chad, between um, enforcing the border? This was a point made in the in the documentary, enforcing the border and making it look like enforcing the border, which I, I, I the impression I get is that's what the Biden administration thinks it, it's pretty good at. That's a fantastic question, John. <laughs> it really is. I've never been asked that. And uh, one is bull excrement and the other one is the truth. And <laughs> that's what border invasion, the American crisis, we show you the truth. And the truth is getting out through independent journalists, uh, shows like yours. And and basically, optics is optics, right? And mm -hmm. you get Mike Orcas to sit there in, in, in the middle of Congress and say, we have operational control. That is a That's code for we don't have control of nothing, but we're all good. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and and essentially, their little trips to the border, I mean, it doesn't get any better than, you know, uh, the cleanup and keeping the uh, migrants from coming across when any one of the Democrat uh, uh, officials comes down there. It, it Optics is good. Like when China came to South, uh, San Francisco and they took all the drug addicts and the, and the homeless people and put them out in the California desert and, and brought China in with all their Chinese flags. The optics was amazing for the for the uh, prime, uh, the president of China, when they went to S San Francisco, per uh, Mr. Newsom, we've got. That's what's really cool about what's going on right now, John, and, and I'm excited about it because people aren't buying the BS anymore. People are able. There are independent journalists that are out there getting the truth, and and people aren't buying the the old day of smoke and mirrors in our government. Yeah, and um, is so the Biden administration has it even gotten to the point where it's not even good at making it look like they're enforcing the border? Oh yeah, we've gone straight to a Kabuki theater at this point. Yeah. It's, there's no way you believe that, that painted face of somebody is a man or a woman at this point. We question everything because essentially uh, they are so bad. I mean, all you got to do is watch a press conference with KJP. Even she doesn't like what's come out of her mouth. That's why she has to have the Encyclopedia Britannica of lies in front of her so that she can switch to a page and stay on point. It's, it's actually elementary and sad, but the, th the thing is, is that's exactly what the Democrats are speaking to, the lowest common denominator of those that choose not to pay attention to the political lexicon we currently live in and are just going based on the ideology of orange man bad or we are all about the big D. We're talking to uh, Chad Caden. He's the National Director of Operations for Veterans for America First. And I guess it's also you go by the name of uh, Veterans for Trump, so which is kind of the same thing. But you're officially uh, we, call, we change call signs when the president's running. We're <laughs> oh. we're we're at the behest of the president. Oh, OK. Um, so w w just in the last couple of weeks, uh, we've heard about humanitarian parole with uh, hundreds of thousands of illegals being flown into various cities. What was the origin of that and how has that changed over time? Well, I, I don't know the origin of it specifically, um, mm -hmm. because even if we did, it could probably be a lie. But yeah. um, the, the the whole concept I can speak to because it's it's ridiculous. You know, um, I like to break things down to its simplistic form, to its to funnel everything, get rid of the nuances and look at it for what it is. We can't have these people in our country that are not processed. We don't know who they are. We've had. Uh, the Senate, I think it was Josh Hawley calling, talking to HHS, talking about do we know these kids have been put into sexual uh, situations um, or being trafficked or are working in sweatshops. 
We do, they don't know where the kids are. We, we can't allow constant people to come into our country and not know where they are or who they are, for that matter. Venezuela has admitted that they've, that they've emptied out prisons to send them towards the, uh, the United States. This is, this is Biden's bloodbath, and, and there's no way around it. There's no way to talk our way out of it. And any policy that goes anywhere other than mass deportation and shutting down the border is all is, is is all for naught, and and it's and it's against what we are as a republic. And the number one job of government is the safety of its people. Joe Biden is treasonous of that particular piece alone. Uh, there's a story in the in the documentary, uh, and again, it's uh, it's called "Border Invasion: An American Crisis." Um, there's a story about a, a, I think the guy's name is Randy Clark, who's telling it um, about a brain dead migrant. He was injured in a car accident, um, and he was on life support, and Mm -hmm. he was in the hospital, and they couldn't – maybe you can explain. I don't know if you're familiar with the story in the the documentary. What was that all about, and what was the point he was being being made there? The point he's making is that what's coming across our border are now our fathers. Uh, Having somebody medically – we have mental hospitals that have been let out. That's been proven um, that have been sent to migration. Um, to bring illegals into our country. These people are coming with medical problems. That who's going to pay for that? Who's going to try to, I mean, uh, based on empathy, we have to do right, right? I was a, an EMT as a firefighter. You know, I, I didn't care what your social background score was or your, what you did or how much money you had. I treated you because that's the right thing to do. Once those people come into our country, now they're, it's a downtrodden situation where somebody with a brain injury or, or brain uh, that is going to need major medical support is, 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 is now coming to where we're paying for that because somebody got them across the border. That, that's the point of it is that we've got everything from murderers to mentally ill to people that, are, that have brain injuries and that are going to need to be on medical assistance of some kind their entire life as they finish out their life, it, be it they stay on our, in our country. Um, this is this is an economic problem. It's a social problem, and it's and it's legitimately a a a safety issue. Um, as we're seeing stories all across the country, from Lake and Riley to the little boy they found a couple days ago um, that was killed in his neighborhood by illegal. It's it's just every aspect of what could be a problem in this country is stemming from our border invasion right now, or is going to in the next couple of years. How has uh, catch and release changed over the from one administration, I guess, to the next? Uh, we're not. Uh, we're not catching uh, anybody. We're they're now they're giving them guns. I think isn't that what I heard out there? Yeah, um, yeah they're the Second Amendment. Uh, yeah, they. they have Illinois Amendment is making them police officers. New yeah. York is putting them up at the Roosevelt in Manhattan. Um, I don't really. I don't know that we can talk about catch release because basically they're being caught or they're being arrested and put back out in the street by Soros ran AGs like you saw in New York after they attacked the police officer. Um, I, I, the catch and release that was that was uh, uh, during Trump and and former presidents before that that actually came, that were better at their optics of the border and what we do with immigration. This is uh, catch and release is, is all but gone as far as I can see. And um, this began with Obama, and then uh, Trump was able to put a stop to it, and then Biden picked it up again. Um, but can, does this go to what we're dealing with now? Does it go back to Obama? Was he the one who first opened the gates? Well, I, I, there's there's an argument there that uh, Obama uh, deported more people than uh, any president prior. Well, he did because uh, uh, President Trump, actually put um, a policy in place where you had to stay in place. You had to stay in Mexico in order to get your paperwork through. And once your paperwork was through, you were invited in and, and you were, de- and there was actual border patrol on the border, stopping people from coming across the border and they would be caught and deported. So uh, Obama, this is a Obama's uh, term, no doubt. This is, this is his border policy. Um, whoever's telling Joe Biden what to do has taken it to a whole nother level, um, just like to have every aspect of our life to the point where we are out there apologizing to the murderer of Lake and Riley because uh, Joe Biden in the State of the Union said that they were an illegal. 
He actually took the time to apologize to the yep. man for calling him an illegal as he murdered Lincoln Riley. This is this is the upside down world we live in. Obama gave us the the pre, the the precipice, the, the beginning of what where we are now. Mm -hmm. And with a brain dead president that we have now, that people are pulling his strings. Obviously, they have come from the progressive side of of Mao. We're talking to uh, Chad Caden. He's the uh, director of operations, national director for Veterans for Trump. Um, and I, I I opened my show by talking about Letitia James and what she's doing, trying to do to Donald Trump. And when she said uh, with a smug look on her face that she uh, was perfectly happy to um, just um, take over his assets, seize his assets if he doesn't pay the $450 million. And I was kidding, but I said, that's a third world country. And I said, because um, you brought up you brought up the uh, the idea of Texas seceding, and I've had that guy on my show, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, and I said I think I was only half kidding, maybe a maybe three quarters kidding. But I said maybe Trump ought to th uh, come right back at him and third world them, and see if he can round up some military to roll into Manhattan with some tanks, and go park in front of his buildings and say come and get me. Because and I'm I'm only half kidding about that because you mentioned it, the way the way people are being pushed, and uh, and and it's gonna I think it's gonna show up in Texas in that secession movement. People are uh, if if it gets if, if these people are in power for four more years, what's it gonna be like? How far can people be pushed before you start seeing secession and a lot of crazy things? Well, I'm always gonna speak to the to the away from the idea of of any type of violence brought on by right. revolution. Um, first off, I, I, I do Twitter spaces all the time, and I ask people that are all about their G.I. Joe and, and let's let's just have the Civil War already. Yeah. Who are we going to fight? <laughs> I mean, really, right. who, who are we going to – is it going to be blue and the gray? Is it? I, I don't know. And, and, and for I, – I think Donald Trump keeps doing what he's doing, and, and he pays the whatever he's got to pay – stay in the courts, go into appeals, get it to the Supreme Court, whatever he needs to do, and does it with a smile as Letitia James thinks that she's actually going to take his buildings. I mean, the guy, the day that they, that they tried to say he owed $435 million or, or whatever it was, um, didn't he, he, he partnered with somebody at Truth Social and made $10 billion. Mm -hmm. I just – I would smile in her face, pay it, and keep going through the courts, keep running my campaign and not worrying about it because – Every time they do this and they make those statements, all it's like uh, in Christmas when you ever you hear a bell, the uh, angel gets his wings. Yeah. Every time Leticia James opens her mouth, that we 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 end up getting more people to vote for Trump. I mean, look at the black community in itself. Yeah. Yeah. They're turning on they're turning on the Democrats left and right. My friend Mark Carter and Isaiah Washington in Chicago are 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 building huge coalitions to actually uh, get away from the Democrat plantation. This is this is where it's at. So I think Trump should just keep smiling at him, walk around in his gold shoes, and tell everybody to <laughs> I hear to, you. Uh, pay attention because he's playing fifth generation warfare, as my buddy General Flynn and Boone Cutler say. He's playing he's playing five G chess, and and Ladisha James, uh, she obviously is clueless because what people don't understand on the progressive side is that in war. Hearts and minds are everything, and hey, the Democrats are losing it. Hey, Chad, I'm out of time. Good luck with the documentary, and thanks for coming on. My pleasure, John. Thanks for having me. Okay, that's Chad Caton of Veterans for Trump. I'll be right back.